Hi, my name is Dr. Shratnaika. I am the head chef and founder of Bellissima. We are Bellissima, specialize in flavored biscuit puddings and we've been around for about seven years. We were the first to market with this concept and as far as our future plans go, we look to take our product global to familiarize everyone else around the world with our three one biscuit pudding. We are currently in the process of opening our first physical store at the Hatch building in Colombo in Fort. We are also looking to expand our range of desserts that are on offer and won't be limited to biscuit pudding in the future. Hi, I'm Rashiduna Ratna, the founder of Bonds Dutch Delicacies. Bonds is a brand that is very new to the market. It's drawing on family traditions which um, span possibly more than 100 years. I'm someone who's been an artist. I have experience on theatre and stage in Sri Lanka and dance and um, more recently in public relations but Bonds is something completely new so entering you know this whole uh, sphere of, of being an entrepreneur is something completely new to me but I'm totally enjoying the challenge. So right now we're specializing in chocolate biscuit pudding made to this 100 year old recipe. Uh, so the classic, which is um, a strong brandy-infused biscuit pudding. And there's also the marzipan, which is a new introduction. So we've given the old recipe a twist. Starting this whole venture was a way of giving back to my mum and a family legacy that's been passed down. And I would love to be able to share this with the rest of the world. Being this specific in making biscuit pudding, has it ever stressed you out as the interest from a client may die down soon? Actually, that was a very real fear because I am an extremely creative person, so I get bored very easily. But I've been able to kind of uh, remove myself from the business and my personal stimulation, so to speak, because the product has to be consistent. You cannot keep changing it or introducing brand new flavors every other week because it takes time to build momentum for people to understand the product. So while the business just kind of chugs along with our product portfolio, what I've done is I've found other avenues to keep myself interested and kind of motivated. So hence I do my YouTube channel, Dishing with Dush, uh, where I get to create new recipes, I consult for businesses, uh, which is like restarting the whole process all over again of, uh, you know, creating brands and uh, creating menus, testing it out, uh, figuring it out, and the excitement of creating something new is always there. Uh, I've also uh, started writing a cookbook, well, which is pretty much done. It's been done for a while, so it's not out yet. Uh, and in fact, it was Roshni who helped me uh, lock down the name uh, for the book, which was Kitchen Reboot, uh, One Day at Dinner. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's kind of how I managed to keep my motivation and interest levels up while not getting bored with just doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I, I wouldn't see it as stressful because I, I believe that if you enjoy what you do, it shouldn't have to be stressful. Um, that being said, I do everything on my own because this is a relatively new business. It's also very new to me as an entrepreneur and a businesswoman because I've been heavily involved in the creative industries up to now and I still am so it's it's nice that I get to play around and challenge myself and um, you know learn something new every day. How hard is it to market your product? Not at all really <laughs> but what <laughs> happened was uh, we've done very little marketing because we when we started uh, Bellissima as a B2B business uh, it was kind of automatic. There was a lot of word of mouth that happened because the restaurants that carried it had their set clientele. They immediately took to it and they recommended it to their friends. So that had been uh, the most important drive to getting, uh, to building our brand really and getting the name out. 
Uh, now we're looking at more traditional methods of uh, marketing, uh, not, not traditional per se, but I mean digital marketing for sure, like FB, Instagram ads, uh, but also, you know, we're looking at magazine ads and uh, trying to increase our uh, customer base from uh, the current uh, click of uh, very loyal customers we have. Um, at the moment, we're heavily in uh, pushing it on social media. Uh, I feel like because it's a very competitive market, but at the same time, it's good to have the healthy competition and it's a different product offering. So I like that, you know, people get to experience something different because Bond's Dutch Delicacies biscuit pudding is also different to what's being out offered out there. So we hope that we can reach more people and uh, yeah, let them experience it. How difficult or expensive is it to be a home-based chef and how do you overcome this? Actually it is and especially if you're a home chef or you're trying to start a food business at home, uh, it can be expensive for the simple reason that you don't have access to B2B rates. Uh, your suppliers are not going to give you the rates to give restaurants who buy in bulk. So the only way you can push past this is to expand your volume. I mean there really is no shortcut. Um, and you also won't have access to credit facilities when you start, so you really do need a little chunk of change to get a business going. Uh, and my advice is make sure you have your cash buffers lined up, because if you get into a business and get cash strapped, it becomes extremely stressful very, very fast. So make sure you have, do you do your budgets correctly? Uh, and once you get to a proper volume where you can tap into these benefits, uh, you will see the game changing and it becoming progressively easier. Uh, well, to be honest, I'm still overcoming it, I think. But, um, I mean, it's been a relatively short journey thus far because Bond's Dutch Delicacies is about one year old now. Um, in terms of expensive, I guess it's, it's just being very st about stringent on quality and I personally make sure before, you know, each jar goes out, I'm just very particular about what goes into it and the ingredients. Um, so yeah. How do you maintain standards in fresh produce? Um, so how we maintain standards in the freshness of, of our product is having really short product cycles. Uh, we make sure we only make a batch that is enough for about a week and sometimes it becomes uh, a little bit of a juggling game because it's constantly, our volumes are expanding so it's almost never enough so we are, it's a constant scramble almost <laughs> when it comes to production. Uh, but this is, I think, a small price to pay to maintain the freshness. And what we've done is we have very diligently uh, calculated the shelf life of our puddings and they keep quite well for over a month if it's frozen. Uh, and we don't add any preservatives. I believe that our products need to be as natural as possible, the way you cook at home. Uh, and that's also, and you can tell it in the taste if there is anything added. So I, I'm not a believer of that. So freshness is purely down to timing. So although we can keep it for a month, we try and push everything out in a week. Uh, it's similar along the lines of what Dush was saying. Um, I estimated the shelf life as in, we've labeled it as 10 days, but you can easily keep it up to a month and um, alcohol is an amazing preservative so <laughs> that alone helps in uh, you know like a lengthier shelf life but to be safe I have said 10 days because I'm not sure once it's out of our hands you know if it's it needs to be kept refrigerated so sometimes if it's kept out and back in the fridge back out again I have no control over that so for that reason we've given that restricted timeline. To what do you attribute your success? Oh, that we could go on for about a day. <laughs> I think so uh, I think essentially what you're going to be faced with constantly is change. And with each stage in your business, you're going to encounter different problems. And if the problems are different each time, that means you're growing. You're, you're, you're faced with something new. This is good. You want challenges. It means it's a sign that you're encountering growing pains and you just need to be creative in how you solve these problems and that's how 
you build resilience and and you work on the longevity of your business so adapt to change um, and uh, so it's very difficult to say this is the the biggest problem we've had because at every stage you face with it, it at that point it is the biggest problem you ever faced so it's just it's constant change uh, since the business is still growing I think I like the direction it's heading in um, it's it's a similar again also to what Dush was saying about the standards you uphold and about your ethos and especially when you even our packaging to everything just trying to make it more sustainable uh, to appeal to this market. How do you differentiate your restaurant from others? I, I think the reason why our brand has become well known is because we have differentiated our product because we introduced something that wasn't already there. We uh, were the first to come up with this concept of flavored biscuit puddings. I mean, biscuit puddings have been there forever. I didn't invent biscuit puddings. But uh, taking something that people were familiar with and giving it a new spin, this breathed new life to that. And also to the dessert market, because at the time, um, I think it was the donut and cupcake craze that was going on. Everybody was making donuts, everybody was making cupcakes. And uh, I think people were just relieved to see something a little different. So that really, really, uh, really work for us? Um, I think there's a growing demand for artisan desserts so this I would classify this as an artisan biscuit pudding and also the fact that we're drawing on a legacy that has been passed down and I think you know people love the story they connect with it I know there are so many families out there who have these amazing recipes which they've passed down you know so it's uh, lovely to be able to share that with uh, the local community and the customers. What is the long-term outlook for restaurant businesses in Sri Lanka comparing to the global market? Well, we want to start really looking at physical retail spaces, which is something I've been averse to for the longest time, but I think it's come to a point where the business requires it. Um, and uh, so that's going to happen this year, where we are starting our first store uh, at Hatch. Uh, and actually, we are doing a crowdfunding campaign at the moment uh, to collect funds for this. Uh, so if you are interested, please go to tribefunds.lk and see if it's something that interests you. Because uh, for the different contribution bands, we have some amazing gifts for um, our, our clients and our loyal fans. So that is one. And also, we are very, very serious about going global as soon as possible, uh, which would follow the retail spaces, of course. So it, it uh, it's just a matter of time, I don't know when, but uh, going global is definitely right at the top of our list. Mm, I think it's interesting because we always look to export the product rather than create a hub or make this a destination for um, that's known for its food and I mean we have some amazing food and culinary delights so uh, maybe that's something we could explore on improving the industry and the standards here and um, attracting more people to Sri Lanka for that purpose. If you had one piece of advice to give someone who is starting out, what would it be? I would say don't think, ah, everybody eats food. Just start, you know, put your barbecue out and start selling, uh, you know, barbecue chicken and we make a ton of money. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, it, food industry is ex extremely difficult and if you are not passionate about it trust me you are going to hate life so uh, my advice would be if you are very serious about entering this industry try to solve as with any any business try to solve a problem that exists so if there is a hole in the market for something identify that and get creative so introduce something new get innovative that is how you really build a brand that lasts that is how you make big bucks because you can't follow the trend. See, I've noticed that since we started, we've signaled to the market that there is a lot of money to be made in biscuit puddings. And every other week I see a new business popping up, which is great. And I, and I love the thrill of having competition and it's all in good spirit. But if you cannot compete with the big dogs, what happens is you end up reinforcing that brand because people will try other alternatives in the market if it doesn't compare it goes against you so it's better that you use that energy because you can't always follow the money uh, and it will work for a very short time so where you 
truly can make the big bucks is innovate. Innovate, innovate, get creative. Uh, and you know, that energy is well spent. And also what happens is you feel really proud of your product and there's a lot of ownership. Uh, and that is what we need to strive. So in with being an entrepreneur, that, that goes hand in hand. You have to have that drive to push for more creative uh, products. So that would be my um, advice because it's not just about making money. You have to love what you do. Would straight off say stick to your guns and stick to your principles. Uh, we believe in your product enough. I think you will see results eventually. Um, but you just have to hang in there and see it through. From the what do you know as each other as home cooks? Well, that's uh, so why I'm answering first, I guess. So I've <laughs> eaten at Roshni's uh, a couple of times. So the first thing I tried was your prawn salad, oh, which is yes. with a mango. Yes. It's amazing. Um, I think you are more uh, comfortable following recipes, am I not? Prawn? Uh, I actually cook by feel. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, so, okay. But so that yeah, was sometimes wrong, I do respond um, when I go to a yeah. recipe, yeah. So, but her food is good. Because at one point she was on a keto diet and I never <laughs> thought keto friendly food could taste that good. Uh, <laughs> and then I also I tasted her biscuit puddings before they hit the market and I finished the entire bowl of the <laughs> marzipan one. Yes. Like, oh God, so good. I'll have to try it. Um, so I've known this a long time and um, yeah, quite a few years actually. Yeah. And um, but you actually got into cooking, was it a few years back, right? That no, actually I've been cooking since I was seven, okay. but I didn't think of it as... As a venture. Yeah, or yeah. anything serious, so I didn't even yeah. tell people I cooked. Okay, <laughs> was, yeah. um, but yeah. I've tried his food and it's amazing. And um, I remember this one incident where he came and baked a cake at my place. And uh, you made a f oat oh, flour cake. Yes, yes, because yes, again, she was on the keto diet, <laughs> yes. and there was no flour in the house, obviously. So we had to kind of use oats and make oat flour. Had to, it was quite inventive. Yeah. It was amazing. Uh, note, uh, this is really generous with his uh, ingredients. Sure. So I think we completely ran out of chocolate, chocolate. and um, <laughs> oats and all the ingredients that day. But I mean, the result was amazing. Yeah. So thanks for that. What advice would you tell each other? Oh, I wouldn't be so presumptuous as to give her advice, <laughs> but I, mean, I wouldn't tell her how to run a business, but I please think... Do. <laughs> <laughs> please do. <okay. laughs> like, I would say trust your gut. Uh, if something feels right, even if the rest of the world is saying don't do it, mm -hmm. listen to that voice and, you know, you prove them wrong. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and even if it doesn't work out, you know, uh, it, there's never a failure. It's just a it's learning experience. It's always... Yeah. And it always has value no matter how horribly things turn out. It's just, it's up here how we perceive it. Thanks. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know what advice I can give you because I see you as a role model in this industry. Oh, you know, I think <laughs> so many people could learn a lot from you and your work ethic. So definitely an inspiration. Uh, but tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't know, know what to say. Because <laughs> I think okay. you've, you've got it all. You've, you've oh, done wow. everything right. Okay. So. What first impression did you have of each other? So I thought this was the prettiest thing I ever saw in my life. Oh I was my God. 13, I think you were 12. I was 12. <laughs> and we were in table tennis class. Yeah, yeah. we were actually table tennis partners. Hi, Mr. Lari Pianta. It's been ages. So yeah, we've known each other young. And we have the same time. birthday. Yes, as well. yeah. we share the same birthday. We share the same right. birthday. And uh, similar taste in food. Yep. All right, yeah. So you don't like Marinda, remember that. Don't like? Marinda. Yes. Oh, yeah. you remembered. Yeah. I'll be allowed to mention brands. <laughs> Oops. That, that <laughs> fizzy so that, orange drink. That is the orange drink. That is a funny story. So, um, <laughs> so I was so enthralled by her. And I was like, do you want anything to drink? And I just wouldn't leave her alone. She didn't want anything to drink. And just to get her off my back, uh, off oh. her back, she was like, just anything but Marinda. <laughs> So I want to get her uh, at Otter's Club, no? Oh, they're yes. shutting down. Did you I heard. That? Oh, yeah. that's sad. That's uh, a conversation for another time. Another, another time. <laughs> Sorry, we are digressing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so she doesn't like Marinda anyway. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> I ended up getting you a Marinda, yeah. which I was not supposed to, yeah. was the story. Anyway. It was so far back. 
Um, but I think, was it on the first day we were paired up as table tennis partners? I think it so. It might have been that yeah. first impression. I think we got on really well yes, though. Yeah. Except. I used to spit on you a lot. From the, uh, yes. That too. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, yeah, I think we yes. had a lot of good times and we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. What do you think of each other's ventures? So I think it's brilliant because she, uh, Roshni has an amazing uh, story that makes sense for her product. And it's a family heirloom, basically, this recipe. And it's honestly one of the best biscuit puddings I've tried. So it's a completely different route to what I've taken because mine is taking something that's familiar and then completely changing it. For her, it's staying true to uh, what's happened throughout the generations and uh, the fact that she uses brandy like all our aunts and uh, you know uh, moms and grandmas do uh, there's a lot of nostalgia there and um, and th f that is just honestly just brilliant that you decided to add marzipan because I love marzipan Thank you. yeah and it tastes so Christmassy so it's it's it really creates a mood the, the puddings I've tried that you made because uh, even if it's not Christmas and you're feeling Christmas, you just get one of those marzipan <laughs> biscuit puddings because uh, <laughs> it will really put you in the mood. Um, completely, completely respect and I'm inspired by what you do. And I mean, you are such a versatile um, chef, you know, it's not that you are restricted to just one thing and you're known for that. So I really admire the fact that you can also be innovative at the same time and that you put yourself out there and you've grown this amazing, I can see you creating this huge empire actually with this, uh, but good on you. So definitely a person who inspires me. What do you think about this program? Well, <laughs> I, I love it because, you know, usually when you have a panel or even if it's just two guests um, and it's, even if it's a certain industry that you're targeting, generally uh, you tend to balance out the panel with people who do different things. Here you have, you're comparing apples to apples. You get people who do the same exact thing in the room together and you get two different perspectives, which is brilliant. Uh, and I've never seen that before. Uh, and I'm glad in our episode, the cubicles were shorter because <laughs> I was watching <laughs> the other episodes and thinking, oh my God, you're locked up in a room. <laughs> like like in a cell. <laughs> segregated. Yeah, so that's good, that, that change is good. Uh, but yeah, I, I really do like the format of the program. Um, yeah, I think this is a fantastic way to um, let business owners and entrepreneurs actually tell their story. So it's an amazing thing that you guys are doing. So thanks for that, for giving us a chance to also come and tell our stories and talk about what we do.